hi welcome to this new video tutorial we're going to detect today the board of tetris and the tetrominos using opencv with python let me show you what i mean uh, this one is the board we are focusing on and we want to detect first the position of the board on the screen and then the position of each cell in this board so this is the first cell this is the second the third and so on plus we want to detect specifically each tetrominos inside the board and the exact location like if it was a bet battleship game where we have the coordinates where the object is located and this is one of the most important parts of this project regarding the visual recognition because from the screen we are going to convert everything into informations that we can use later on to uh, build the intelligence to play and solve the game if you're ready for this let's start uh, before going right away into the code let's first take a look again at the board that we want to work on so this one is the image with the board and usually we were detecting this in real time from the previous code now just as we want to focus only on the board i just took a screenshot of firefox with the game and we will use the image so it will be for us easier to work uh, you can take your screenshot or you can just download the code and also this image from the link i will put somewhere on the description and now let's get back to the board uh, let me increase the size of this board okay we want now to detect the board so the board in this case is this table right here where all the blocks go inside and we can skip all the rest for example hold score and also this next part we can skip it we don't need that how can we proceed to detect the board we have few methods that we could use for example we could use template matching so we take this image so we save this as uh, this image as template and then we can say take uh, find this template on the screen from firefox and the same we could do for the tetrominos we could take each single block let me see if i can increase the size even more we focus on each single block we take a block as template and then we can take the block and then say look for the position of each single small block into the entire image and this is one example but we should go for the easiest solution possible always and we can see that everything here has a different color than the rest so this board has a different color than all the rest so this is black uh, while all the rest doesn't have any black color and then each tetrominos inside or even outside has its specific color so this is uh, just a really good start to to go it's an, uh, the first approach that we can try because it's going to be one of the easiest the color detection so let's try this one let's go into pycharm or whatever editor you have and then let's start importing cv2 cv and then we import numpy as np now we're going to code this from scratch and later in the next videos we will mix this code from now with the previous code that we built in the first two tutorials now i'm going to load the image that i've just showed you so img is equal to c2.imread then tetris.png and uh, now to make sure that everything is correct let's show this image on the screen cv2.im show then emg tetris and then emg and then cv2.weight q 
key zero and finally save it so that destroy all windows and now let's run this one okay this is our window that we want to use let's now focus on the color detection uh, i will put some video on the uh, some, some link on the tutorial which shows how to do the color detection i've done already some other tutorials so if you want to go deeper into this you can check this one and right now i will anyway write it again just a bit different from what i did in the other videos before so let's increase this window now we want to detect on the entire board so we need to find the contours of this boards and this is the contour that we would like to detect so let's take the color and the color is going to be this one so i use this element uh, this color picker tool to take the color and then i just go right here and uh, by the way this is a gimp it's a free software i guess you should know this one and then we select the ranges so gimp has from 0 to 20 uh, from 0 to 100 from 0 to 2055 and opencv goes from 0 to 2055 so that's the one we want to know the specific range and regarding this color we see the ranges which are 35 blue 35 green and 35 uh, 36 red so let's look for that emg and then uh, detecting the board board color is equals to mp dot array and now we define the ranges 35 35 and 36 so 35 of blue 35 of green and 36 of red usually when we do color detection we define the ranges we have a low range and a high range because it's usually hard to detect a specific color when for example you are on a video in real time because when the light changes also the color changes so it doesn't make any sense usually to pick only one color but we pick ranges in this case we have only one color which we know it's exactly this one 35 35 36 and it is going to be always this one so we don't need two different ranges instead we use only one, this one so from this we can create a mask with only one range mask is equal is equals to cv2.in range we want to find this mask on emg and now we need to define the two ranges the low range and the high range we as we have a specific color let's just use these two ranges here minimum and maximum are always exactly the same and now let's show the mask cv2.in show mask and then mask and let's run this one And the color uh, the detection just by this color seems uh, great. The only thing that we probably don't need are these small elements outside these small dots, because the same color is somewhere also uh, here in this part of the screen. But that's not a big problem. Now that we know the exact position uh, of the board so we have exact the contour let's use the opencv function to detect only the contour of all the all the table so it will be underscore contours and then underscore see if to that find contour we won't find the contour on the mask the mode is cv2 dot red 3 and then the method c2 dot chain 
chain approx simple and if you want to know more about the contours i also have a video about contours detection you can find it on youtube on, on my website you can find the article so these are the contours of the mask and i will show you the contours of the mask so that it will be easier to understand what we are working with so for cnt in contours um, let's show them cv.draw contours we want to draw them on emg then the contours is uh, cnt and then minus one uh, so this one the function draw contours can be used to draw all the contours at once so you just put all the contours or we can as we are looping through it we are we have only one contours and here we're going to say draw the last one we have only one we draw the last one you can put minus one i guess even zero that's why we do it this way and then the color let's say 0 255 0 which is green and then thickness let's say 3 pixels thick and we can go and let's now show this on the screen and that's exactly what we want we want the board detection and we also detected some other extra things that we don't want now here we detected not only the boards but also the cells inside the board except a few cells which we don't see as some block is already their position instead of detecting all the cells a better approach will be to detect only the board and then we're going to create the cells ourselves ourselves and we can do that once we have all all the board we can divide the board in as many uh, as many columns as it is and as many rows as it is this original one how can we detect only the outside of the board without taking all the elements just here inside we could take for example only the contours with the biggest area which is the board so all these small squares here they have a small area then the biggest one is the board for sure we're sure that the board is going to be always the biggest as we know we have each one of them we can simply sort them from the biggest to the smallest we draw the first one which is the biggest and we break the loop and we skip all the rest which we don't need so let's do this right now so after we have the contours we say again contours and it's going to be equals to sorted because we want to sort them but as we uh, we have the contours but we don't have the area of each one of them yet and we want to sort them from the biggest to the smallest first we need to detect the area to do this in one function we're going to use uh, the lambda function of python so we say again contours and then key is equals to lambda and we are going to calculate the area of each of them when we look through them cv2 dot uh, contour area of x so in this case we calculate for each one of them the area and then we um, sort them by the area one last thing the, as this function is going to sort the contour from the smallest to the biggest but we want the biggest as first we're going to say reverse is equal true so it will put from biggest to the smallest and here we have the contours sorted 
now we draw the contour so for contour in contours we draw the first one then it should go back to the loop to draw the second one but we don't want all the rest so we just say break after the first one we're done we don't need anything else and to make sure if everything is working correctly we run the script and we see this green contour that we just draw there so we're going on the right way now as we want to create a new table on a new board let's also create a new board i will call virtual board so that we can separ separate the screen with the actual board that we will focus on after all the visual recognition is done uh, and we can do this just at the beginning so after emg we can take the size of emg and we can create a black image with the same size and we will create this virtual board on the black image and this is going to be high um, rows which is the height uh, calls which is the width underscore which are the channels which we don't need mg.shape and from this we're going to create a new black image so it is going to be virtual board is equals to mp.0 this is the way to create a black image so it's an empire with only zeros and we define the size of this image which we detected from the original image so it is going to be rows calls and three channels because we want it with color and then the data, data type uh, to create the image must be uh, always np.uint8 and let's say let's put some common create creating a virtual board then we are here detecting the board so we can put this contour for example later on the virtual board also emg also virtual board uh, let's show this okay i'm printing i'm drawing the contour on the virtual board but we don't uh, we're not displaying it yet so that's why we don't see the virtual board so see to the im show virtual board then virtual board and let's run this one okay this is the virtual board now there is one more thing to work with which is detecting the tetrominoes so we want to know exactly which one of them is and let me show uh, some posts i found from i found from wikipedia this is the exact page from wikipedia which talks about tetrominoes tetrominoes are these the let's say the object that uh, comes down on the board when we play tetris and we have seven of them we have the i straight pol polyomino the o square polyomino then the t j l s and z we want to know when exactly each one of them is coming and also the exact location of them when they are coming so using a similar approach with color detection that we have done for the board let's do the same with the tetrominos and i will go back and refer again to the previous uh, image on GIMP to detect the colors uh, let's start with you know let's do them in order so uh, here we have the first one which is this the straight polynomial or i uh, no, uh, polyomino uh, so we detect detecting uh, let's put some comment detecting tetrominos and then the first one is the i polyomino is equals to cv2 oh, okay now we need to define 
the range of the color so np dot array and let's now detect the color so to detect this i polyomino and it is this one straight is four blocks straight and uh, here the the block has different colors around we can take this one inside here so don't take for example this one outside because when the block is coming you have some projection of the block so if i shrink a bit this image we see this uh, i don't know exactly the name of this polyomino but this orange one coming down and this is the object where it is in the moment and this this it is the projection where it is going to be we don't need to have this so to not not to make confusion let's take only the color that doesn't conflict with this uh, one so if we take a look for each one of them we see that this orange is uh, most likely different than this one yeah it is so we take this square inside so let's start with the i polyomino let's use a tool color picker and then let we we select the square and then let's take the ranges blue and remember where the ranges must be taken in the exact order i'm telling you which is bgr because opencv uses always bgr format so 116.98.0 we go back here 116.98.0 and the i polyomino mask mask is equals to uh, cv2.in range range um, we are going to find this on the image and then the ranges which are this low range and higher range which are the same and then we can show the i polyomino mask see if it's not in show i polyomino mask and then i polyomino uh, mask and we run this one and here is the mask So if we most likely if we overlap this board with the polyomino mask, we shall see that we correctly detected the location of the polyomino, which is this one. So this I polyomino has been detected by uh, color detection. We could do the same operation for each of them. So we could say uh, let's take the second polyomino which is the o or square polyomino so we take the second we do the range and we do the same operation for all of them as we are doing the same operation for all of them let's improve the code a bit instead of doing like, over and over again repeating the same lines let's store only the information regarding the color of each them and then we can use a loop to loop through each infos from them and finding the mask uh, let's do that now we can create um, a dictionary polyomino let's polyominos or tetrominos not polyominos uh, tetrominos is equals to and then we create a dictionary then we put for example i polyomino and then an array with the infos about the color so we have the first one then the second one which is O polyomino and we detect the color of the second one so let's do that quickly the second one is the square so it's this one and the range is mm, let's make sure it's correct 
okay uh, 0 blue 102 and 116 um, uh, 0 102 116 then the third third I will keep this on my other screen so I can see it so the third is the T polyomino T polyomino and you can guess which one it is as uh, the letter always represent the shape of this uh, polyomino so the t we go back on this one and we look for the t polyomino which is this one let's pick this color 127 0 and 106 127 0 106 um, also let me uh, I want to be sure that when I take the polyomino from this right side the the uh, they have the exact same color of the ones uh, that are in the board because otherwise this would be a mistake uh, I cannot even compare them as there is no polyomino which is here coming here uh, okay it doesn't matter in, right now in case there is a mistake I will correct that later uh, let's still uh, go on and let's pick the colors so let's see uh, regarding the next one okay we have the T polyomino now we have the J polyomino polyomino J polyomino and uh, let me increase the size again so 400 per the J polyomino is going to be the blue one exactly this one and the ranges are 12767 0 12767 0 then the L polyomino and the ranges are the L which is the orange one this one range is 085127 085127 and then uh, just to missing the S polyomino S polyomino and the Z polyomino Z polyomino polyomino uh, let's look for the both of them so s is the green one the green one which is exactly this and the ranges are uh, the values are 35 127 0 uh, 35 127 0 and the last one the z polyomino the red one mm -hmm the red one okay this one on the ground zero zero one hundred sixteen zero zero one hundred sixteen and then we can loop through it first of all before doing the loop i want to run the script to make sure that there are no mistakes in this uh, dictionary so i will run control uh, shift f10 to run it and it seems fine so if we print the terminals print the terminals here we have everything let's now loop through them and let's draw let's find a mask for all of them so for tetromino in tetrominos uh, then let's print tetromino and let's uh, let's show it so you can see that here we are just accessing the key 
inside each dictionary what we want now is we want to get the array with the specific color so that we can create the mask so to do this with python we simply say tetrominos and on tetrominos we access uh, access this specific key so we access tetrominos so we could say even better for key as we're looking through a dictionary for key in tetrominos and then we ac access the key and this is the R, uh, bgr color and from this we need to convert the this into a numpy array so bgr color is equals to np dot array of the bgr color and now we can create the mask mask is equals to uh, cv2 dot in range and then in range on this one on the image we want to find the ra range of the image and then bgr color for the low range and bgr color for the high range um, and then this is going to be the mask for each one of them uh, I want to show you quickly how these masks work and then we will put them just together for the moment so simply we can say cv2.im show uh, mask tetrominos and then mask and I'm going to change as we have already the mask for the board if I'm not wrong board color mask let's just call this board mask so that we don't make any confusion later board mask and then after here we show each the terminal i put a cv2 weight key so i'm going to show you uh, one at a time cv2 dot weight key uh, zero mask the terminals and that should be it and let's run them one by one okay this now we have the first mask so it's the first tetromino which is the i1 uh, the second one is the square so i'm just pressing a key to to continue over the loop then i press a key again we have the third one the fourth the fifth and the sixth one and the seventh uh, it looks great uh, because it works really well with just a simple uh, simple code we were able to achieve this and to know to show all the tetrominos so we are we are creating the mask for each one of them uh, so creating uh, creating a mask for each tetromino now we would like to get the exact location in the board of each tetromino but first to tell the exact location so if i open the board let me find again the image uh, if for example we want to know the location of this the tronimo we know first we need first to know where each cell is located so let's uh, let's put the cells into the board that we have on the virtual board we can do that by as we know the width and the height of this board we want to know how many cells are on the width so how many columns one two three four five six seven eight nine ten and how many rows we have 20 rows how do i know i know because i counted them before one two three and so on until 20 that's how i know it and now let's do that so here we have the board and just after we detected the board we can create the cells so uh, creating 
cells into the board we need to divide the board in 20 rows and 10 cells this operation it's not that hard to do but you need to follow carefully each step otherwise it can be confusing it's uh, mostly about geometry and looping through the uh, and a loop python loops so we can say for n in range of 20 so now we focus for each row so we do the range for each row and then for each row we create 10 columns so for n in range of 20 and then again another loop to create the column for n to in range of 10 now how can we know the size of each block well we know we know the size of the entire board we know the width we know the height so if we divide the width by the 10 blocks we can get the width of each single block if we divide the height by the 20 blocks we can get the height of each single block so we need to do that so here uh, let's access the information about the board let's access width and height here we detect the board we find the contour of the board from the contours of the board let's uh, get the coordinates of the rectangle so we can do x y width and height are equal to cv2 dot bounding let's see bounding rect of cnt bounding rect of cnt so we have x and y and x and y we're going to use it later so we're going to store this information after we look through the first element or in this case we don't even have to loop through it as we know that it's the first one we can say that cnt cnt is equals to contours Con mm, okay contours contours zero the first element and some type of contours zero we don't need to break anything and then we have x and y x uh, let's say board board x board y uh, board board width and board height so uh, block width is equals to board width board w divided by 10 it's not board but board and then the block height is equals to board h divided by 20 and so let's now print block width uh, to see that everything is correct block width and let's print block height and let's run this one indentation block ah, okay this one is not complete so i'm going to comment this one and I'm going to run the script again. Uh, what we see now is 26.6 and 26.25. When we find the width and the height of an element with OpenCV, and these are going to be coordinates, we always need to make sure that they are integers. Uh, a pixel either exists or doesn't exist. So it's either 26 pixels or 27 pixels not 26.5 so simply we can solve this by say integer 
of board divided or the width of the board divided by 10 integers of the height of the board divided by 20 so if we run this script again we can see that they are both approximated to 26 and that's enough what we want to know regarding the block width and height so let's move on with creating the cells into the board we can keep this information just after the comment regarding creating the cells into the board and so for n in range of 20 f4 n2 in range of 10 each loop it works this way so in the print n let's print n and print n two let's run this so we have n which is the row and in range of 20 is the row so on row zero we're going to we have the first cell zero cell one so it's row zero cell one row zero cell two row 0 is going to keep always the height equals to 0 if you if we check to draw some element with opencv either uh, even better let's show this with the real virtual board we're going to work on um, so I, I believe i need to restart this again so i can show it on the real board to draw the elements in OpenCV, we start counting uh, the coordinates value from the point on the top left, which is going to be this one. So this one is going to be 0, 0. If we draw 10 blocks here, it will be y0 and then it increases only the, v, uh, the, the x coordinates. So 0, 0, the first block, then 0 plus 25. And then should be something uh, 26 then 0 y and then the other position is going to be 26 uh, per 2 so 52 and so on that's why we do the loop i suggest you if you have never done anything like this to do some exercise with these loops and by the way let's move on and let's now show this visually what it, what it's doing this one the block is going to be uh, block uh, block x coordinate is going to be equals to the block width multiplied by n and those are the numbers that we saw before so the the n is going to be no, sorry this is going to be the row so it's going to be the block height per n so this is going to be n2 and the block uh, block y position is going to be to, for the block height multiplied per n so n are the numbers of the row the rows we move on the height 10 are, is the number of the columns and we move to the width of the screen and so we can try building something with this cv2 dot rectangle let's draw a rectangle on the virtual board point 1 is going to be equals to block x and block y so this is the first coordinate top left of the rectangle blocks x and block y and then we need to have the second one which is the width and height i mean the, the right bottom so we can simply add to find the uh, the right position block x plus block width block y plus block height 
and then let's draw this rectangle let's make it white 255 255 255 the maximum of each color and thickness let's make it just one um, let's see first how this results and later we can adjust if we have any anything wrong it's really interesting um, we achieve uh, the result we want with only some problem at the moment that we have the block just here at the top uh, we have the block here at the top left but not starting from here we uh, this happens because we are not taking into consideration the position of the board but we are starting just from the not zero zero of the board but from the zero zero of the window we have two options either we can create a new empty uh, window with just the board or we can just move this element inside this window for matter of simplicity i'm going just to move this one inside this window so we don't work with uh, we don't we don't have to to do many other things with this simply before each coordinate we need to add the distance of the board so we need to add the x and y of the board so we add board x to the x so x board x plus block x and also board x plus block x and block width and board y board y plus block y and board y also in the bottom right point board y plus block y plus block height and let's rerun the script okay this was uh, enough to place the board on the screen now as last operation for this tutorial before it, it gets too long let's try to put the tetrominos inside this specific board and so we can do this by drawing the rectangle of the tetrominos in this specific board each time we find their mask so uh, let's go on the part where we detect the tetrominos so we detect the tetrominos we create a mask for each one of them uh, now we need to know the position of each of them to be sure that they are to know the cells where they are located to know the position we need first to find the position of each one of them and we can do it this way we can say after we create the mask of each tetromino from the mask we can find the contour as we did before so i will just go over and okay i uh, i will not copy i will just write it again con uh, let's say tetromino and uh, underscore contours and then underscore cv2 dot find contour we want to find them on the mask and then the mode is cv2 dot red tree and cv2 dot chain appro uh, okay not this one chain approx simple And for each of them, so we look through them for con for CNT in contours. We um, create we create a rectangle, so we find the coordinates first x, y, width, and height. Cv to dot um, dot. Uh, I'm a bit tired now. I can't, I can't recall this simple. Uh, okay, bounding rect. 
uh, bounding rate of C and T and now C V to uh, I will just put a rectangle so that it's clear what we are doing each time C to the rectangle rectangle on a virtual board and let's make point one is X Y we, you don't need by the way to draw this rectangle I'm just doing it so to uh, to show what exactly is going to happen now uh, x plus width and uh, y plus height and then the color let's make it uh, 0 0 or 255 let's make it red and thickness uh, 2 mm. and now I'm going to show the virtual board in real time see to let him show virtual board and then so that for each loop it's clear what we are doing cv2 dot weight weight key zero and i'm going to run this one and now we are drawing the first the terminals but we are looping through each single block at time i put a cv2 dot weight key event on the loop so after the first it it was blocked then i press a key and we see again a second third okay we have more blocks each time this is interesting i didn't know this one uh, by the way it's not a big problem right now and i go on and this is all for all the tetrominos that we have now we are drawing them we need to store somehow their position so for each tetromino we want to know also the location of each single block uh, we will see this by the way the next time as i've already put a lot of materials now to work on and it's enough not to get confused the important thing is that we need to know not only the location of each single uh, block into the cell but also we want to know which exact tetronimo is so for example which shape uh, it is going to have because later it will be useful to have that information as we can rotate them around and if we want to play the game we need to know when we rotate them how they will look like so we want to predict uh, how they will change with their rotation if we want to use the intelligence to play this so this is going to be now the end of this video this was much longer than the videos i've done before so uh, let me uh, have any feedback regarding them if it was too long if it's better to have shorter video shorter video and split them or if i can proceed with longer video uh, like this one or even longer because i realized that to put a lot of information and to go through each step it uh, requires a lot of time and also want my video to be easy to understand for each one so i don't want to leave many information uh, behind that's it for the moment see you in the next video